Okay, hello everyone. So it has been a while since I've made a, a lesson video thingy. Um, so what I want to show you today is a very particular lesson for junior high school. So this is the textbook, New Horizon, and this is the number two, so it's for grade two or grade eight. Um, and inside, the particular lesson I'm going to show you today is uh, Let's Read Three, Can Anyone Hear Me? And it's a short story. It's like four pages long. Uh, I'm just going to read this to you quickly. Okay. So, there was an old shrine in a village. One day a storm came and washed the shrine away. The next day people looked for the shrine, but they only found a huge hole in the ground. People looked into the mouth of the hole. It was dark, deep and dark. Someone called into it. Hello, can anyone hear me? No echo came back. A boy picked up a stone and threw it into the hole. He listened, but there was no sound. People heard about the hole on TV. They gathered from all around to see it. Um, one day, a man said to the people of the village, I'll build a new shrine for you, but you must give me the hole. The people of the village agreed. The man advertised the hole as a new dump. All right. People gave money to the man and dumped many things into the hole. They brought garbage, test papers, old love letters, and so on. Trucks carried industrial waste, nuclear waste, and many other things from far away. Then they dumped everything into the hole. A few years went by, but the hole did not fill up. It was very convenient. People stopped worrying about garbage because they now had the perfect dump. The sea and sky became clean and beautiful. People built many buildings. The village became a town and then a city. One day, a young man was working on the roof of a new building. He heard a voice from the sky. Hello, can anyone hear me? It said. He looked up, but he saw nothing. There was only blue sky above him. He started working again. Something fell down from the sky and hit the roof near him, but he did not notice. It was the stone. Okay, and then story is finished. So basically, a storm comes, washes away a, a shrine. There's this giant hole. People throw a bunch of stuff in there because it never seems to fill up. And then one day, the stone, the very first thing that was thrown in there, is like, it falls down. So... Yeah, uh, that guy's in for a nasty surprise. But anyways, this is the short story that we did today. And it's got some new vocabulary for, for grade eight or grade two. So um, it's all on the sides here. And then right after the story, there's a bunch of questions, but we didn't touch this. So I'm gonna tell you guys about what, what I did. Okay, so uh, first thing, I went to englopedia.net and I looked up to see what they had for activities or worksheets or whatever, right? And I ended up finding this wonderful worksheet, um, or sorry, this um, uh, crossword puzzle, that's what they're called. And I wasn't sure if the teacher already had a plan or not or whatever, so I printed this, this out anyways and then I had it ready. Um, it's always a good idea, like, if the teacher tells you what page or what unit you're going to be working on, um, be prepared to be the main teacher, because you never know. <laughs> but anyways, so I, I printed this out first thing in the morning, because we weren't able to really plan. We had, like, maybe 10 minutes, and then the, the first class was this, this class. <laughs> So we decided the first thing we're going to do, of course, we're going to have our morning greeting. And then immediately after that, I had a slideshow PowerPoint about St. Patrick's Day, but that's something else. And it was only maybe like five to less than 10 minutes. And so when we started this, the first thing we did, um, or the first thing I did was I asked the students to open their textbook to page 90, 91. And um, I told them the title, Can Anyone Hear Me? Now, what I like doing before I even start is making sure the students kind of have an understanding of what it's about. So I asked the students, can you translate Can Anyone Hear Me into Japanese? 
And so uh, some students made guesses and the teacher helped and they finally got it. And then the teacher was like, okay, correct, good job. So uh, once we understand what the title is, this, the teacher has a CD with this textbook and she put it into the, the TV so that the students could listen to the story. And it's interesting because it actually had like sound effects and, and different voices and stuff. So that was really neat to listen to. So uh, it went page by page and it, it actually read it fairly quickly. So it was like a native speaker reading it. And okay, so when it was finished being read, now usually if we have more time, I would have probably asked the students what was the story about and ask them to uh, say it in Japanese so that the, Eng or the Japanese teacher can uh, confirm that they understood what was going on. But the teacher said it was okay to move on, specifically because we didn't really have a lot of time. So what I did was I showed this to the, the students and I, w I said, okay, now that we listen to the story, let's try the crossword puzzle and it's uh i actually didn't know this but not all students know how a crossword puzzle works so the teacher had to explain like maybe 30 seconds how to do a crossword puzzle so you look at a cross so these answers will be going this way and down and these answers will be going that way and what the numbers mean how they coordinate with the questions um so she explained that and then immediately after i said okay please move your desk to have four people in one group. Um, so what they ended up doing when they worked on their crossword puzzle, imagine these are desks, the students pulled their desks together, like one, two, three, four, pulled them together so that they can talk to each other quite easy. So the room ended up looking like, um, like this, imagine these are old desks. So it was just like groups of four floating around and each student had a th um, the word search, this word search. And, okay, so this is, this is where we weren't really sure how to do this because we weren't sure, like, the first time we didn't do this, but the second time we did, and it worked superbly. So, uh, what we did was we gave each student a, a thingy, a, a crossword puzzle, and then there are 38 questions total, and this class had 35 students. So we decided, well, let's give each student one question, and that makes it so much easier on them so uh because they they're a little bit lower level english uh students so it was nice for them to kind of like like they actually took time just for the one question that was theirs kind of thing okay so anyways we told them they had about five to ten minutes to do it and then as soon as they uh, they finished their their thing they started doing other ones too which was really nice to see but uh, just getting them to finish the one question that was theirs and all of these are, are direct sentences from the story um, maybe three or four of them are a little bit comprehension check but they're so, they're definitely doable I think um, so anyways then um, so after five or ten minutes or so, imagine this is the chalkboard. So I had, um, across and down like that. And then I had one, two, three, four, all the way down. And then one, two, three, four, like all the different numbers. And what I did was I, I ask each student, so I'd, uh, this student, I'd be like, okay, what is across one? And um, she would give me the answer, which in this one, it's hold. And uh, I found that it definitely benefits like English learners of lower levels if you give them a hint. So I actually gave them a hint. So every first letter in the word, I gave them that first letter. And then they'd have to figure out what the word was by looking at the story and figuring out their one question. So that, uh, it, it actually gave them a little bit more confidence too when they answered, I noticed, which is really, really nice. So um, anyways, yeah, we, we gave one student one question. I wrote it on the board so that everyone could copy it out. And uh, by the end of, of uh, the crossword puzzle, it was basically the end of class. So it was really good timing. Now, a tip I'm gonna give is make sure you have the answer key. 
and if you can write the answers in the blanks I didn't do that and a lot of the time I was looking for the number and I'm like oh no where's the number um, but anyways it's just good to confirm that what the student says is correct because this one student had uh, instead of fell uh, he said uh, Phil or or no no instead of Phil see I can't even find it right now but anyways, he had a different word, so we, and I, I was going to say, yes, that's correct, but then I realized, I was like, wait, no, that's not correct. So anyways, yeah, that is how we did this lesson. Um, thank you very much for watching. This is the write-up. Every, every, um, after every class, I always do a write-up of, um, basically, like, what, what worked, what didn't work kind of thing. It's good to keep a journal, because... Especially for someone like me, I've got such a, a butterfly brain, what I call it. It just like flutters and I just lose track of thought immediately and I'm just like, ah. But anyways, thank you very much for watching and um, we'll see you next time. Bye!